spirit of faith. Go on and stand up with us. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just enter into worship together. Father God, we thank you. Oh, let's just lift our hands and worship a moment. Father God, we cast our cares on you because you care for us. Oh, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Oh, who died on the cross, who brought us back into fellowship with him. And Father, we thank you if we've accepted Christ. Then our name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Father, we worship you. We worship you. Oh, we thank you, Father. We worship you today. Oh, let's just praise him and give him glory. Hallelujah. Could not get past my blame until he called my name. I'm so glad he saved me. Darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he saved me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old has gone, there's new in 
worship you today, Father. All you've done. Ah! Uh -huh. 
how good he is to you. Let him hear your voice. Lift your voice up. Tell him how good he is to you. Magnify you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. You are faithful. You're worthy of our praise. We lift our hearts. We lift our voice. We lift our hands. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your faithfulness. Hallelujah. We thank you today for your, your word. We thank you, Father, that you are good, that you never change. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above, and you never change. Father, you're never giving evil things. You're never unfaithful to us. And Father, we give you praise today. We give you honor and gratitude. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. Hallelujah. I came to worship you. How many of you know when we praise and lift our hands and worship him with our lips, how many of you know he inhabits the praises of his people, his very manifest presence that, that listen, that destroys the yoke, amen, and uh, refreshes and uh, gives life and, and strength and causes answers. You know, when we enter into that place, we enter into the place where answers are. Praise God. Aren't you glad for the presence of God? Aren't you glad we've got a place to run to in a, in a, in a crazy world, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Amen. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Praise the Lord. Father, we're so thankful today for your presence. 
We thank you today for the fellowship of the saints. We thank you, Father, as we gather together, your presence comes in a manifest way, in a corporate way, in order to meet needs and refresh and give answers. We're so grateful this morning, Father. Today, as we gather, we, we come in faith, knowing that you'll meet us at our point of faith. Whatever we've come for, whether it be uh, uh, direction, Father, whether it be healing, whether it be strength, whether it be boldness to do what you want us to do, Father, we gather it up in your presence because it's so readily available. We approach this service with faith, believing that we receive what we need. And Father, thank you in advance. We, we say in advance, thank you for meeting every need as we uh, approach your throne. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, greet three or four people and tell them, I came to worship him. Amen. Praise God. Find, find a person or two. Tell them you're glad to see them this morning. Hallelujah. I need to do anything. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me know if I need to do anything, guys. I can grab another mic or whatever. Praise the Lord. All good? All right. There's a hollow echo up here. I don't know if you can hear it out there. Okay, so how many of you are glad you're in church this morning? Yeah. Glad, glad you're, you're, you're here for what God has for you. Praise the Lord. So glad to see you. It's encouraging to me to see you. How many of you know we encourage one another? Yeah. Praise God. It's good to have everybody here. I'm going to have Brother Carlos come up. He's got some announcements to tell us and uh, fill us in on what's happening. Good morning, Spirit of Faith. Good day for answers. Um, do have a few announcements here. Uh, since the renovation, they are uh, moving things around. The tithe box that used to be out front there in the hospitality foyer, it's above the uh, drinking fountain in between the bathrooms if you have to give a tithe or something to make you aware of that. Also, the sign-up sheets used to be in the hospitality foyer. They're just in the back of the sanctuary, so they're available for you. Um, there is going to be a summer session for the Divine Healing Health today. This is going to be Sunday, so it's going to start uh, May 5th and run through August 25th at 8.45. And uh, Miss Ann Armstrong will be uh, the instructor. And Pastor Debbie's book, Divine Healing and Health for Today, is the book uh, that you will need uh, for that. So um, please register for this class, and you're just going to go to the SOFFC events page at eberlyministry.org to sign up. And please sign up by May 1st. We would appreciate that. Then tonight, Minister's Mantle. Looking forward to it. It's been a while since we've had one of those. Uh, pastors uh, have it on the heart to impart to those um, under his ministry. It's not for people just coming up under his ministry. It's for everyone to come and bring your supply and learn. So that's tonight. Also, there'll be an offering during Minister's Mantle also to make you aware of that. Um, there's, you know, I like giving every chance possible. And one of the reasons is, for some reason, I like receiving at every time <laughs> possible. You know, you got to think about it, you know. So we have the honor to uh, give during that uh, service also. And then a couple, of, a couple events coming up. We have Pastor uh, Edward and Angela Anderson coming up. Sunday, June 12th, they'll be here in the morning at 10, then in the evening at 6 p.m. So get that on your calendar. And then Gem Camp Meeting. So this is where we put in for vacation. We take the week off. We just set it aside for the Lord. This is going to start on Sunday, August 4th, and run through Thursday, August 8th. There's some specific details about this. As you know, Pastor Nancy will be here, uh, Pastor Jay, Pastor Debbie, um, Reverend Ike Acabogo, and also prayer school with Pastor Noel and Ruby Ramos, and also uh, worship with uh, David Ellis. So on a couple of the kickout classes after service, there's going to be prayer school with the Ramoses. This is going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It'll be one hour after dismissal of the AM service. 
Then also there's going to be a school worship with Reverend David Ellis. So registration is requested. There's registration coming soon. Uh, with that, there's no Thursday session. So it's just going to be Tuesday and Wednesday only, and that'll be an hour after service also. So more information coming on that part of it. And just a couple of reminders here. You know, if you do have a testimony, you know, Pastor Jay shared testimonies, the uh, two or three testimonies the other day. Uh, you can go online and submit it. You just go to Everly, uh, everlyministry.org, go to the Contact Us page, and submit a praise report. So, you know, let us know what's going on in your life, how God is moving it in, in it, and maybe he'll share it, maybe not, but it, it's an encouragement. You know, he shared last Sunday or Wednesday it was on the three uh, three items and just an encouragement. Just, you know, it reminds me of don't quit. You know, you know, Brennan, don't quit. You know, just good things are happening. And then my last announcement, since everyone's on Facebook and all the social media sites, uh, do the like and shares. You know, you know, put on your post, you know, get the word out. You know, there's things going on in the spirit of faith and uh, Kansas City also. So that was my last announcement, sir. That uh, with the Andersons, that's June 16th, the date there, June 16th. So don't don't miss that. They're, they're, you'll be uh, uh, you'll be blessed by them. They're real solid. I like them. I like them because they, there's no fluff. You know, I get around them, they sort of cut the fluff out. You know, I'm just like, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, but they're wonderful uh, word and spirit people. Praise God. And then uh, Pastor Debbie's, uh, she, she got hit real hard with, uh, I think, a couple of things. So she, was, she just didn't want to be distracting this morning. So she stayed home. But you join your faith with us, all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She'll get, she'll get here real, real soon. Praise God. All right. Let's stand to our feet. Uh, Kansas City is going to join us in a few minutes and, uh, and uh, you know, partake of the live stream. And so we're going to coordinate with them. But get out in the aisles and fellowship with somebody. Find somebody you haven't got to say hi to yet. And uh, greet them. Let's take a few minutes to fellowship. <clears throat>
Hallelujah. Well, let's return to our seats. Praise God. Say it out loud. The Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. Amen. Say it again. The Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. Amen. That includes today, doesn't it? Amen. Well, we want to welcome Kansas City. Good to, good to have Kansas City with us this morning. Greetings to you. Good to have you in our service, uh, joining by, by uh, you know, live stream. So uh, just join in with us and, uh, you know, participate. The same anointing that flows here will flow there. Same, same word that flows here will flow there. And if we're praising God, you praise God. If we're, we're, we're re reading the word, you get in the word with us. Hallelujah. And there's no distance in faith and prayer and the spirit. Hallelujah. So whatever, whatever happens here will we'll manifest right there, I believe. So we'll look forward to seeing you real, real, uh, real, real, real soon. Praise God. Um, I want to get uh, the uh, scripture that I have in my heart this morning. Are you ready to give the uh, tithes and offerings this morning? <clears throat> I want to turn to a scripture. And while I'm turning there, you can uh, raise your hand if you need an envelope. The ushers will serve that to you. And, of course, if you're giving, check, giving by check, you can make it out to Spirit of Faith Family Church. And, uh, and uh, if you're giving electronically, you know all the information up here. I think most of us are, are aware of what, how to do all that now even though I'm not. <laughs> I think I could figure it out pretty quick. I just still give by check, but, but it's just all the same, right? First Kings chapter number four. I wanted to read something the Lord put in my heart here uh, that has helped me over the years. First Kings chapter number four. How many of you remember uh, Solomon in the Old Testament? King Solomon. He was uh, a very successful king. He was uh, David's son. And so he was uh, used of God to build the temple. Uh, there was a lot that God gave him. And there was a, he had a dream. You remember the dream he had. And God said, ask what you will. And he said, give your servant a wise and understanding heart to, and wisdom and discretion. Um, basically, he wanted to make right decisions. That's what wisdom enables you to do, make right decisions. And so we read about that. In 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29, not, not about the vision or the dream, but about the testimony of what God gave Solomon. And I wanted you to notice something that we don't read about in the dream experience. Notice it in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29, God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. How many of you know that's what he got in that dream? And if you read through the Proverbs, there's a tremendous amount of wisdom in the Proverbs. Uh, it'd be good for you to read a proverb every day or read a proverb regularly. And uh, there's a lot of good things in there. God's the one that gave him that. Amen. How many of you know wisdom? Let, let, let me reverse that. Dumb dumb doesn't come from God. <laughs> that all by ourself, right? Any, anybody ever made a dumb dumb decision? <laughs> yeah, we did that all by ourselves. But uh, wisdom comes from God. Hallelujah. God gave wisdom, God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. And then here's something that, uh, this is the part that has blessed me as much as the wisdom part. Because how many of you know Jesus has made unto us wisdom? You see that in the New Testament. Uh, the Holy Ghost will make you a genius by, by uh, his, his insight and what to do in every situation. But, but the next part is what blesses me so much. He got, God gave uh, Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. And look at this, largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Largeness of heart. Now let me ask you a question. Was there any connection between, you, do you think there's any connection between Solomon's wisdom and his wealth? You remember he was the wealthiest king ever. Jesus even acknowledged that back in, in, uh, in the Gospels. He acknowledged the, the wealth of wisdom uh, the, uh, that Solomon had, but also all the wealth of finances that he had. Jesus talked about it. And uh, Jesus didn't say, he, that, that dirty, rotten, uh, wealthy guy. No, he, 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 he liked it. Amen. He, he talked about Solomon's wealth. But, but notice here, uh, he didn't just give him wealth, or let's say, that didn't just give him wisdom that brought wealth. He gave him largeness of heart. Largeness of heart. Say largeness of heart. What is that? Well, that just means he's big on the inside. He's big on the inside. Say out loud, he was big on the inside. Hallelujah. In other words, he had a great big capacity on the inside for big things. 
And, uh, you know, uh, abundance is restricted by smallness on the inside. How many of you know we've got to, in order to walk in abundance on the outside, we've got to have bigness on the inside? Well, apparently you're learning that but, uh, because of your response, but that's the truth. The things that restrict people financially are not what's around them on the outside, it's what's on the inside. The smallness of thinking, the smallness of vision, the smallness of believing. Amen. They don't have an abundance on the inside. And, and the, you can tell why. Can, can, you, can, I, can I give you some indications of smallness on the inside? Amen. When the kids come and they say, Daddy, I'd like a new bike. And the, and the parents go, well, we don't have that kind of money. You know what I'm talking about? What do you think? Money grows on trees, boy. You know? <laughs> Somebody said, well, well, what if I don't have the money? You don't have to say you don't have the money. You can say, well, Jesus will get that for you. Let's release our faith. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> See, your, your thinking and your, your insides are not the same size. When you say that, when you say that about Jesus, let's believe God and Jesus will get it for you. When you say that, that's an indication. Your, your thinking on the inside has not been reduced down to the balance of your checkbook. It's, it's, got, it's, got, it's taken in the largeness of the supply of heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can tell by the way people function that they don't have bigness on the inside yet. And that's why they don't prosper. I'll tell you, you need, to, you need to break out of that. And let me, tell you how, let me tell you how largeness gets on the inside. Through revelation. Through revelation. Say it out loud, through revelation. And when you get a revelation of the bigness of His supply, it'll expand your insides. And whatever the size of your insides are, that's how much you can take in. Yes. Amen. Amen? I mean, the next time you go buy toothpaste, don't just get one, get three. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. Start thinking big, you know, start thinking. I didn't say start thinking pandemic or something like that. I, not, not because you're afraid, but because, hey, I'm tired of running down here every three times a week, you know, because, because I'm just getting what I need. I'm going to get enough for the next three months or, you know, whatever. And then the next time I need to go to the store, I'll get another three, so I'm built up for six months. Well, I don't need it yet. See, see the, the insides are the size of need, if that's what you say. We got so much stuff stored up in our closets. After a while, I'm telling Pastor Debbie, just hold off. I mean, where, where are we going to put the rest of this stuff? <laughs> Amen. Not because we're expecting a, you know, not because we're preppers. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But just because we got abundance on the inside. Praise the Lord. Some of you are thinking about it. So uh, a poverty mentality, uh, you, you know, you have to guard against that because because it's, it's, a, it's a restrainer of the flow of God. Yeah. Amen. Um, don't buy something just because it's on sale. When you go to the store, do you, is the first place you go to the sale rack? Amen. Well, it's awfully quiet in this spirit of faith, family church. Huh? Somebody say Hallelujah. I'm all for getting a good deal, but, but I go past the sale rack because, uh, because I'm just looking everywhere. And I look on the sale rack, but I don't buy it because it's on sale. I used to do that. In fact, I would buy it if it was the wrong size just because I liked it and it was on sale. But I broke myself of that. I'm like, this, this, ain't, this ain't fun anymore. You know what I'm talking about? How you doing? Good. I'm feeling real good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus came in Luke 4 18 he came to preach the gospel to the poor notice he didn't come to give handouts 
Now, Jesus was a giver. You can see that all through his ministry. He gave to people. He gave to people in need. But his main ministry was, the, the, the main thing he had for the poor was the gospel. You know why that's what he came to bring the, the poor? is because the gospel is the, pure, the cure for uh, poverty thinking. Amen. For poverty thinking. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. How many of you have learned? I, my parents taught me this. I, I had to get a hold of it again whenever I, you know, went out on my own. But my parents taught me this. Don't just buy cheap things. You usually have to buy two of them by the time the, the good one would have uh, lasted even longer than the two, you know. It, it's very expensive to have a poverty mentality. I tell you, it's very expensive. And it's very limiting in life. Well, somebody said, I'm happy. No, you're not. You're mad. <laughs> Amen. Poverty don't make you holy. It makes you mad. After a while, you just get mad. It's like, I'm tired of this. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise God. So uh, that's the cure. Get, get a revelation of the gospel, of the abundance of his supply, and it'll enlarge you on the inside. I said, it'll enlarge you on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't get, uh, you know, don't get, uh, what's the name of that? I'm trying to think of it. I saw one in our house the other day. I'm like, I, I curse you in Jesus' name. But, but it was with a cheap brand of the Saran Wrap. What's that called? Value? Value? What's that? What's that called? Value price or whatever. Great value. I saw some of that in our house the other day. I was like, where'd that come from? I know I didn't buy it. I know Pastor Debbie didn't buy that. <laughs> Amen. Someone said, well, it works. No, it doesn't. You know it doesn't work. <laughs> Hallelujah. You think God's big enough to get you the real good brands? I wore clothes for, for I was going to say generations, but I'm not that old. <laughs> I, I wore clothes for decades that weren't comfortable, scratched like a burlap sack. And it was the most fun thing in the world to go home and take them off. You know what I'm talking about? Because <laughs> I feel like I can move again, you know, or something like that. And finally, I realized that, listen, God's big enough to get me the main brands and things that feel good. Amen. That feel good and look as good as I am. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> got to encourage myself in the Lord. I looked in the mirror this morning. I got to encourage myself in the Lord. So <laughs> praise the Lord. One of the greatest enemies of, of prosperity thinking is struggle you've had in the past. You know, well, I don't want to waste money and do without. Well, I'm not preaching and wasting money. How many of you know that uh, waste is different to different people? It's different for different people. For you, it might be waste. For somebody else, it might not be waste. It's just, after a while, I've learned this, after a while, you know, you ever done this? Here's an here's a indication of poverty thinking. You, you go to three stores to get your groceries. Because over here, they've got milk five cents cheaper. You know what I'm talking about? You know, after a while, that gets old because you realize you spent a dollar in gas to go get five cent cheaper milk. Besides that, you get to the place in life after a while, your time's worth more than that. I can sit at home and believe God for a dime. You know, I, if I had more time at home in the Word, I could believe God for that nickel, you know. <laughs> So that half hour it took me to run across town, you know, I can use that to build my faith. We got to get rid of some of this stuff. Come on, somebody. I said, hallelujah. Poverty don't make you holy, it makes you mad. Buying the cheap green beans and they're always you know, chewy and stuff like that, you can't hardly chew them. Some of you are laughing because you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You're not supposed to get your, your mentality from your bank account or your, your, your pay, paycheck or your environment or past experiences. You get your mentality, your pro, 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 prosperity mentality, you get it from the Word of God. And it'll change you on the inside. Hallelujah. 
said hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, you get your mentality from the Word of God. That's, that's where you're supposed to get it. Hallelujah. And so renew your mind with the Word of God. And uh, I challenge you this week when you go buy groceries, I challenge you to get three of something. Even if you're struggling financially, go buy three of something. Three, three bags or whatever you call those packages of toilet paper. <clears throat> So, so, so you don't have to go buy it on Monday and Saturday. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Stand with me to your feet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can work an abundance mentality and bigness. You can work it on the inside. Amen. Amen. Uh, I remember years ago, I remember years ago, you can tell your uh, mentality's growing and, the, and, the, and your spirit is enlarging in faith sometimes by, uh, I remember I'll tell you a story how this happened to me. I used to be a big one for shopping at J.C. Penney's. I'm not preaching against J.C. Penney's, but that's just where I used to shop. And I'll never forget as I grew in faith, I never forget how one day, this is back in Tulsa, the, the Woodland Hills Mall, I think it was called. Uh, we, went, we, we, we always went into the mall through J.C. Penney's because uh, that's our main place we wanted to shop. That was where we were. Now, if that's where you are, that's fine. But, but I'm saying God can expand us. Nothing wrong with shopping at J.C. Penney's. Like, if, if you like scratchy things, you can buy things at J.C. Penney's. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. But, but that's where I was. But anyway, and, and fine if that's where you are. Praise God. In fact, if, if you buy clothes at Walmart, fine. You know, get your bills paid. But, but uh, don't just let your mentality stay there. So we were walking into J.C. Penney's, and I'm like, man, J.C. Penney's, I can't find anything at J.C. Penney's anymore. They used to be a nice store. But now they're just not, I don't find in there what I'm looking for anymore. They're sort of going downhill. I wonder if they're having financial problems. So I look through, and that happened two or three times. And then I'd go on through, you know, Debbie and I'd shop our way through pennies and then go on into the mall. And I remember about the third time that happened, I'm thinking, what is wrong with J.C. Penney's? Seems like they're going downhill. After about the third time, we walked out J.C. Penney's. We were walking down the hall to another store, and it dawned on me. It's not J.C. Penney's that changed. It's me that changed. I got a different mentality through feeding on the Word. Now, you don't realize there's nothing wrong with shopping at J.C. Penney's. So I'm not preaching against that. If I went in there and I found a pair of socks I'd like, I'd buy them at J.C. Penney's. <laughs> Amen. So I'm not preaching against that. I'm just telling you that if you want to move into greater things, you've got to get a different mentality. And, and you can tell where your mentality is by what's big to you. I said, what's big to you? <clears throat> so you can tell where you are by what's big to you. If it's, if it's big to you to spend $1,000 on a men's suit, if that's big to you, well, then you're not there. But if $1,000 on a men's suit is the only way you can really get one that really fits right and looks right and has the kind of you know, patterns and styles that you like, and then and to you, it's just money, well, then you're there. It's not a big deal. That doesn't mean we criticize anybody that buys a $100 suit. I got one the other day. It's absolutely free. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And on the rack, it was on sale for $150, but I had a gift certificate. So I bought the thing because I liked it. So I'm not preaching against it. I was going to say cheap. It's kind of cheap. But I, it looks good. Especially on me. I'm the, I'm the one that makes it look good, you know. <laughs> Got visitors here today. That preacher stuck up. My goodness. No, we're just having a good time. Praise the Lord. But let's increase our mentality. What do you say? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. You need to, God wants you to have things that match your insides. Amen. Amen. I know when Pastor Nancy walked into our home, she was so blessed and uh, was rejoicing with us. And I said that to her. I said, this matches our insides. She said, I understand what you're talking about. Amen. You get to the place where a worn-out car without air conditioning, 
that you can and you feel the breeze coming through the floorboard. You get to the place, that doesn't match what you have on the inside. And how many of you know God will meet you wherever you are in faith? If it's not big to you to have a nice car that, that you, you have to turn the air conditioning on to get a breeze. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ask your wife. She'll tell you. Myrtle will tell you on the way home. But if it's not big to you, then God will meet you right there. He'll meet you at your point of faith. Hallelujah. 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 I remember when we took our vacation to Hawaii, for example. We spent money like crazy. This is the most fun week out too, as 10 days that we've ever had in our life. We still talk about it. Not about the money, we talk about the fun. <laughs> Hallelujah. It just matched on what we had on the inside. That was back, what, how many years ago was that? Somebody, maybe 20, let's see, maybe 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 years ago, something like that. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. And the devil kept saying, you're spending too much, you're spending too much. I said, Mr. Devil, I give in these amounts. Shut up. Amen. Isn't it amazing how he'll try to condemn you? You know, you're giving that amount all the time. Are you still out there? And then you go to receive a little something nice for yourself, and the devil says, well, you're just wasting money. I'm just, I, you know, I, I just got to the place. It's none of the devil's business anymore. This is not between me and you. It's between me and God. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some got to give God a shout tonight, this morning. Hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to God. Father, we thank you for your word that enlarges us. It enlarges our thinking, enlarges our capacity to receive. Father, as we grow and feed on your word, I thank you, Father God, for better things ahead. Days of heaven on earth. Days, Father, where we're eating the good of the land, the best that the land has to offer. And we owe no apologies to the devil for it. We give you praise, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we are faithful to your word. You'll be faithful to meet us at our point of faith. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Say this out loud. I'm going from glory to glory. I'm going from faith to faith. I'm going from one degree of things into a degree of bigger things. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm not staying where I am. No, the Bible said the Lord will increase us. Anybody know the rest of that verse? More, 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 and more, and more, and more. Doesn't matter if there's a recession. More and more and more and more and more and more. Doesn't matter if the dollar's not worth what it used to be. More and more and more and more and more and more. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give God a shout. That's me, that's me, that's me. That's me, that's me, that's me. Praise be to God, praise be to God, praise be to God, praise be to God. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So what you going to do this week to expand your, 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 your insights? You're going to feed on the Word of God, right? Feed on the Word of God. And then act on that largeness of the supply. Act on it. Go buy three. Go buy, you know, buy, buy three milks. They might spoil. So don't do it on milk. But do it on, do it on something like toothpaste or something like something that won't perish. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. It, it'll, do you, it'll do you a lot of good just to have abundance all around you. Everywhere you look. Well, there's abundance in the pantry. Amen. You go into the house, there's abundance of furniture. Amen. We got enough furniture. We got furniture and storage. We could go out and fit a whole other house. Amen. I keep telling Pastor Debbie, let's sell some of that. Let's sell some of that. Now nah, we'll get to it. You know, she wants to. Anyway, so praise God. I said, go ahead and get, get, get into more that God has for you. But it doesn't happen because you just say it. It happens because you got it on the inside. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. 
I'm trying to quit, but I can't get, it, can't get released for some reason. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You can struggle for so long under small, restrained financial conditions that you can't see anything else. You know what I'm talking about? You just can't see anything different. You need to do something to make sure and see something different. The Word of God is the main source of seeing something different. Amen. Amen. But if you have to, go drive in the rich part of town. Go drive, go drive where the houses are a million and a half or something like that. And whenever it rises up in your heart, eh, they shouldn't spend this kind of money, you just need to say, no, my God says I would eat the good of the land. Amen. And you don't have to rob banks or deal drugs or, or be, do something illegal or be a tax evader in order to get it either. You can pay the government all their 25% tax or whatever and still have it. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Amen. So let's do something this week to expand our, our insides. Praise God. My wife and I, we had a, a back in Tulsa, we had a, how, we, we lived in apartments for years. One bedroom, I think we eventually got one, two, two bedroom uh, apartments. And uh, we started desiring a house. So we started looking around and we found this development we really liked. It was really nice, actually. Uh, not by today's standards, but back then. And so we went in there, we drove in there and uh, we opened the door when we drove into the main street. We just, we just go in there from time to time. In fact, it was part of our routine. Usually every week we'd just drive in there. We'd go, you know, like we're going out to do something on Friday night or something, and we'd go past it, and we'd just pull in there. Yeah. And we'd just drive around and say, we, 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 we want a house in here. Yeah. Yeah. And one time we just agreed that that's where we're going to live. So we pulled in the main, you know, not the main street, but the development main street, and I just opened the door. I put my foot on the ground, you know, and I said, wherever I put my foot, that's where I'll possess. I said, somewhere in here, we're going to buy a house. And eventually, we saw, we, Pastor Debbie was reading in the newspaper one day, and she saw this ad. I don't know, we don't have newspaper ads anymore. Well, I guess they do, but we don't look at them. <laughs> but we saw this ad, and somebody said, for sale by owner house, and we looked at the address, and she, sure enough, it was in there. Yeah. We drove over there right away. Actually, I think I was out of town. Pastor Debbie, I think, saw it and drove in there, and she saw it, and she said to me, you need to come see this house. I believe I found our house. We, we went, when I got home, it was kind of late one evening, and we went over there, and, and just as soon as we drove in front of it, I had to witness, that's our house. That's our house. So, I mean, it was night, and I didn't, I didn't want them seeing us outside, so I just, you know, we just opened the, foot, our, our, the door and put our foot on the curb and said, we claim this house in the name of Jesus. And I couldn't have bought the front door on the place. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But how many of you, what are you going to use for money? Faith. That's what we're going to use for money. Sure enough, we got in that house. Praise the Lord. Sold it and make, made a good profit. After, I mean, you know, after years of living there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, now, you know, that was big back then. Woo, my goodness. I got my own place upstairs called an office that I can go to. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, uh, man, that was, that was big. How many of you know your joy can be full? You remember Jesus said, your joy will be full. Yeah. Ask and you, rec you receive that your joy may be full. Yeah. I told you I can't get released, so I'm just going to stay with this for a minute. Yeah. 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 Is your joy full? All right. Come on. Then God has something better for you. Yeah. God has something better. And our joy was so full there for a while, but after a while, that house started getting small. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Seems like the walls are crowding in on us. Of course, God moves us up here then, but and so, but eventually, we just kept we just kept getting bigger and bigger houses. Well, is that what it's all about, Pastor? No, I didn't say that's what it's all about. But while you're doing the will of God, God wants you to enjoy life. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Don't go through your whole life mad because you don't enjoy anything. You don't, don't enjoy your house. Don't enjoy your car. Never get to go on vacation. Grind, nose to the grindstone all the time. 
You need to get bigger on the inside. Get bigger on the inside. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Woo! Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Praise God. Praise God. Same thing, the same thing with Pastor Debbie and I. I'm, I'm sure many of you do. But uh, it's not my business what you do. But what Pastor Debbie and I, the same, we do the same thing, that what I just talked about. We do that same thing with our giving. We keep increasing. We keep getting bigger and bigger. It used to be that to give $100 in every service. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now it's just normal. Amen. 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 Minimum. Yeah. I'm not trying to say I'm not trying to uh, say that for you to do that. I'm just simply saying wherever you are, just keep expanding and and see expand your vision to how much you can give. Amen. I'm going to give the church twenty thousand dollars this year. I'm going to give the church a hundred thousand dollars this year or whatever. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will increase. He'll meet you at your point of faith. And he'll increase you up to that point. Yes. Hallelujah. When, when we first started out, our whole budget for the whole month was $600 a month. How on earth do you live on $600 a month? But that's where we were living, $600 a month. And, and, and <laughs> you know, now, I mean, just, just on top of our tithe, our offerings are way over $600 a month. Can the Lord do that for you? Yeah, but you got to get big on the inside. Praise the Lord. 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 Amen. Father, we thank you. Say it out loud. I receive enlargement on the inside. Tell your neighbor, I'm going from glory to glory. And from faith to faith. Amen. What is that? Progression into larger and larger things. Larger and larger things. Amen. Well, give God a shout, and then you can be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. People work. People work all week long for, uh, you know, to their paychecks and so forth. And, then, and the Bible teaches that, doesn't it? But don't, listen to me very carefully. Don't do all the natural and don't bring, to, bring faith to bear on the money you need in your finances. Amen. People that hear what I'm saying and get mad or sort of shut down on the inside, they're their own worst enemy. The devil doesn't need to do anything. He, you, you just do it to yourself. You, you don't, you don't want to struggle your whole life just in the natural and get whatever you can get in the natural. You, need, you want God's power involved in it. Yes, amen. 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 So, so soak in this kind of talk. Yeah. Even when your mind goes, I don't, I don't know if I like that kind of preaching. Come on, Come on somebody. I think that's partly why I can't get off of it. I need to get you unstuck. Well, Pastor, I don't want any of this old world's good. You lie. You lie, you lie. You work all week to get this world's goods. Besides, that's not the world's goods. Amen. It's your inheritance from your heavenly Father. The earth has he given to the children of men. Praise God. So, praise the Lord. Everybody still glad you came to Spirit of Faith Family Church? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, my wife and I really didn't get any help until some preachers just made us mad. That's the truth about it. They just made me mad. I can tell you who the preachers are. That just made me mad. But eventually I got to the place, well, is what they're saying true? And right there it is in the Word. So I decided rather than getting mad, I'm going to get glad. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You got to make that decision. I'm just going to get glad. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
Well, they're just trying to get an offering. Well, you can leave. The, you can leave. The doors are unlocked. You can leave anytime you want and not give a dime. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Nobody said you had to do anything. Uh, they just want my money. How is it that you don't go into Walmart and, and, and whenever they, yeah. the buzzer goes off when you leave, you don't say, well, they just want my money. You don't say that at Walmart, and they actually do just want your money. They're not there as a charity organization. <laughs> Amen. I could really get mean on unbelief, but I think I'll stop right there. Because some people only have one nostril above water. Look at you. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor we're going to go from glory to glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that's another indication that, that you have small mentality is whenever preachers talk abundance, it makes you mad. But that doesn't bother me. Jesus had people get mad at him when he preached on abundance. The Pharisees, whenever he talked about money, the Pharisees, who were, the Bible says, who were covetous, they, they derided him for his talking about money there in Matthew. But that's all right. So if they criticize me, then I'm just with Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Maybe if Travis would dance, we'd get, get rid of this. We, we'd get, move on to the next part of the service. <laughs> Woo! Glory! <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. You, you, you won't have a better friend in the world. You, you get some kind of big blessing, whatever, move into a brand new house or get some kind of big blessing financially. There's all kinds of blessings, but I'm talking financially. You won't have a better friend in the world than me and Pastor, Pastor Debbie. We'll just rejoice with you. We'll just rejoice with you. Just thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just rejoice with you. All right, you can be seated. Let's try to be seated and see where we can go. <laughs> you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. We 
Hallelujah. McKinnon is getting ready to have her baby, not, not what a couple weeks maybe, that's the due date's in a couple weeks, and she wants us to go ahead and minister to her and agree with her for a smooth delivery and, uh, you know, the right doctors and everything like that, so we're going to have her come up. Is Sam working back in the back somewhere? Okay, yeah, he's, he's working, so, but uh, reach out your hand towards her. How many of you know we have a covenant along this line as well? Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Ann, would you come up? Just come up and uh, join me here. Father, we lay hands on McKinnon. We're so grateful for your faithfulness to her and Sam all these years. Uh, thank you, Father, that you're the same today as you have been all these years. We lay our hands on her in agreement, Father, for a smooth delivery that's right on time. Father God, a healthy baby, a healthy mom. We thank you for uh, the right doctors, and we ask you to guide the doctor's hands in uh, all that, that, that they do. And we thank you, Father God, for an easy flow for McKinnon. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. And Father, the transition for the young ones uh, that are going to have a new sibling, Father God, may that be a transition that's an easy flow for the family. In the name of Jesus, we'll be careful to give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. McKinnon got, there he is. Oh, <laughs> praise God. Um, you got saved in one of our meetings way, 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 way back when you were three years old. McKinnon's gotten saved, filled with the Spirit, grew up here, found her spouse here, has, having her babies here. I'll tell you. So we're going to claim her as a daughter too, you know. <laughs> Amen. So we're excited for you. God will be faithful. Amen. 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 Give them a big hand because. <laughs> Amen. They're doing their part to grow the church. <laughs> Amen. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You have your Bible this morning? Why don't you open it? Let's go to uh, Mark chapter number four. The Gospel of Mark chapter number four. Goodness, boy, it's, it's already 1130. Is that clock right? Okay, no, nobody said anything. I guess it's, <laughs> we'll just say it's not right. How's that? <laughs> Mark 4, verse number 19 in the Amplified. How many of you were here Wednesday night? We talked about distractions. You want to get into that again? I believe the Lord wants us to. So let's look at some things. Mark 4, verse number 19. Now this is in the Amplified. For time's sake, I'll just read the Amplified. Then the cares. This is the parable of the sower. You remember? The sower sows the word. And uh, he talks about the word bringing forth in different kinds of ground to different degrees based on... Um, uh, yes, thank you. Based on uh, the uh, different conditions of ground and the circumstances. And this one's the thorny ground. Remember? And uh, the seed grew up and it had thorns competing with it. And uh, he called the thorns in the Amplified the cares and anxieties of the world and distractions of the age. Yeah. The cares and anxieties of the world and distractions of the age. There's never been a, a verse at that, that a time that that verse is more applicable than right now. We got the most distracted generation that ever has been. Somebody was telling me in the background, back in the back room, Carlos, I believe it was, said uh, 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 Randy Greer put out a newsletter on this recently, and uh, I didn't get it for some reason. But anyway, he said the average attention span right now is eight point something seconds. Social media has reduced people's attention span down to eight something seconds. Well, how many of you know that's not going to work when it comes to being a doer of the word? Because this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, thou shalt meditate therein. God's plan for our minds is that we be able to meditate in the Word of God, and you can't meditate more than eight, uh, you know, you can't just meditate eight some seconds and get the nourishment out of it. Amen? So, uh, but... Uh, uh, so we've got to learn to master this. We've been using also Galatians 4, verses 6 and 7, where God's, this is the Amplified Classic also. God said to Cain, you know, he noticed that Cain, Cain's offering hadn't been accepted, and God said, uh, why are you sad? Why are you dejected? You get a hold of yourself. Well, I'm paraphrasing here. Get a hold of yourself, because sin lies at your door, but you've got to master it. Right. You've got to master it. So there's things that, I, I, I just, that word master it, yeah. those two words, master it, they just jump out at me. Yeah. Over the last number of months, you got to master some things. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we want God to take some things away, and He's saying, Master it. Master, master, master it. it. Yes. In other words, go ahead and live victorious in the presence of that thing, but not letting it dominate you. 
Amen. You can't, you, you know, like take, for example, the flesh, the appetites of the flesh. That You can't, hey, oh, God, take this appetite away from me. He's not going to be able to take that appetite away from you. That's going to be in your flesh. You just have to master it. So there's things that, uh, that we need to master. And one thing we need to master is our attention. Uh, we understand children, for example, like back here, Children's Church. The children, we don't have, you know, hour-long Bible studies. Their attention span isn't that, isn't that great. We just do short things. because. But how many of you know, as people grow to adults, their attention span grows. And they should be able to concentrate on something longer than just, you know, a few minutes. Amen? So we, we need to uh, grow in this, grow in uh, our, our holding our attention on the right things and not being distracted. Now, Satan's a master of distractions. He actually uh, has honed the skill over generations, and he knows, I don't know if you've noticed, he knows how to work on you. I know he knows how to work on me. And uh, he'll, he'll oppose the word by uh, trying to get me distracted from it. Sometimes people will say, you know, take this verse or, or take these truths or read this book or something. Well, I just can't, you know, I don't, I don't like to read or I don't like to the, you know, read verses or so forth and so on. And we say, well, you know, because they, they'll, they'll say, well, I have ADD or different diagnosis. See, uh, the doctors will give them different diagnosis. Yeah. Listen, that doesn't mean that you can't overcome that. That's right. That's right. Either is God being unfair when he says to meditate therein day and night? Is there exceptions for any of us? Well, I can't because I have attention issues. No, you can reprogram yourself and you can learn to hold your attention on the right things. Amen. So uh, don't accept those kinds of things. Just take the word of God and practice it. Amen. Uh, the devil will keep you, uh, he'll, he'll keep you running, like I said on Wednesday night, well, I think it was Wednesday night, he'll keep you running on a hamster wheel, going nowhere. There's a lot of activity, a lot of motion, but not going anywhere spiritually. Uh, the Bible says, run with patience the race that's set before you. In other words, the race God set before us is a race that has progression to it. We're not supposed to be just going through motions, going nowhere. We're to be progressing on the race God has for us. Amen? Amen. So uh, this is uh, something we need, to, uh, we need to learn to do. Uh, just because the devil's making a lot of noise or circumstances are pressuring you for your attention doesn't mean just because it's pressuring you that it's the most important thing. You learn to know the difference between what's pressuring you and what's important. Yes. You understand what the difference is? Some things are, are demanding. Some things try to grab your attention uh, and hold, them, hold your attention on it. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, circumstances, something screaming at you, telling you you're, you're going to fail in this area, the doctor's reports, you know, the checkbook balance, something screaming at you, or the lust of the flesh or something, you know, or just the 24-hour 24, 24 news cycle. You ever notice they like to uh, jump from crises to crises because that's called for them ratings. They, they can, if they can keep people, you know, just, yeah, viewership. They can keep people all tuned in. Oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Amen. Amen. How many of you know you got to wean yourself off of that? Uh, and so, uh, you know, that's, that's just something that the, the enemy uses. There's a lot of things he uses. You know, he uses people, tries to stir up people to try to make life uncomfortable, try to distract you. Amen. Stop falling for his strategies and learn to guard your attention and hold your attention on the right things. <clears throat> when your attention goes somewhere, you start going that direction. My wife, she's telling me uh, when she drives with me, I, I have a tendency of driving like this. My eyes glance across the road while I'm looking at the cows over in the field over there. And think, <laughs> don't tell anybody, but that's the way I drive. <laughs> and if you're not careful, whichever direction you're looking, that's the direction your steering wheel goes. <laughs> Amen. Same thing's true with spiritual things. Whatever direction you keep looking is the direction you start going. It's the truth. So, uh, you know... Uh, 
Learn, I like to say it this way, learn to dictate direction. Because the enemy is going to try to stir things up to get your attention on different things. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, but God wants you to dictate what your attention is on and, and dictate direction. Yes. Uh, there are things, you know, one of the, one of the things, I, I haven't read a lot of success kind of books, you know what I mean by yeah. success yeah. kind of books, yes. but I've heard some people talk about some of them, yeah. and they'll say, successful people don't just, uh, you, know, you know, you might say in layman's terms, they might say, uh, just to use layman's terms, they don't run around putting out fires. They don't spend all their time running around putting out fires. They give themselves to what is important for the success, whether it's a business or something like that. Amen? And they hire other people to put out the fires. You know what I'm talking about. But, but the point is, they're dictating direction by what they hold their attention on. If they want to expand the company and get into a new branch, maybe they're selling uh, to the retail market, but they want to sell to the wholesale market or something, and they need to develop the company over in this direction, well, then, then somebody's going to have to give their attention to designing that, setting that up, and preparing for that you know, branch out into that. And so they can't be busy over here just putting out fires all day. They got to give their attention to this. So they're dictating direction yes. by what their attention is on. Yes. Does that make any sense? Yes. Do, that with, do that with the Word of God. Yes. Yes. If you want to get into something, let's take you, so you want to get into a healthier lifestyle, Come on. you know, physically. Well, you've got to give yourself to either the Word of God, yeah. right? Yeah. Feed yourself on the Word of God. Or you might want to study some things about diet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just don't have time. Well, you know, <laughs> amen. Yeah. You have time laying up in the hospital. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not trying to be mean or predict that. But how many of you know, sometimes you have to say, no, I'm giving myself to this right now. It's simple, but it's, it's so uh, powerful, really. Um, so when you break free from just the, the distractions of life, like he said there in Romans, I mean in uh, Mark 4, 19, when you break free from that, it's like it's as if Satan doesn't have a, he can't put that ring in your nose and pull you over here, pull you over there anymore he can't do that anymore now you're dictating direction amen now and rather than letting him pull you off pull your attention off over here pull your attention off over here that's one of the biggest principles of faith you can learn you hold your attention and your your focus on what God said and you keep moving with that while there's a yakety yak yak over here and a fear monger over here amen Am I making any sense this morning? So uh, the, the, the Bible defines, you notice this word here, uh, you know, cares of this life. The, the Amplified says back here in uh, uh, Mark 4, 19, the cares and anxieties of the world and distractions of the age. That's, uh, that word distractions is very important. I find the Amplified Classic very accurate over and over and over again. I really like the Amplified Classic. The newer one, I just I get amazed sometimes how they changed it. But uh, that's a whole other subject. But the Amplified Classic says cares of this life, distractions of this age. That's a good definition because the, uh, the uh, Greek definition of the word cares, it involves being separated from something through distractions. When it says there, the cares of this world, how many of you know, it means to, the Greek word means to part unity with something. So, and then the English word means to divide someone's attention to prevent concentration. That's what the English definition is. The Greek says to separate. And I think we, we, we get a lot of revelation out of the Greek word because it's not so, the, the distractions, you can be distracted by things that are legitimate sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> but you and I have to make sure and put them in their right place. Yeah. Not come before the things that are important. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Remember the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Yeah. Find out what the principal thing is, emphasize it, and it will give you everything else. 
Does that make any sense? In other words, find out what the main thing in God is, like the wisdom of God, the leading of the Spirit, faith in this Word, along certain lines that you need to grow in and and have a better lifestyle in. Uh, Find out what is really important. Focus on that, and it'll fix all these things that are trying to distract you. Does that make any sense? So, uh, uh, So whenever you... Uh, are distracted you're separated from what will give you what you really want separated that's what the Greek word says to be separated from whatever's you know the plan of God really so you can you can put these separations in different categories the Lord's been talking to me about five different areas where uh, distractions separate uh, or come to separate us from the from the things of God you want to go through some of those so first of all, the word. You remember the cares of this life there in Mark 4, 19. The context is the word. The sower sows the word. And we could preach on that for three months, to be honest. And, but, uh, you know, there's just a lot that the enemy wants to keep you from being really, to really feeding on the word, meditating on the word, and getting that word on the inside of you. It's not the word alone that does the job. It's the word growing in your heart. Remember the Bible says, so mightily grew the word and prevailed. It doesn't prevail just because it's it's the word. It it prevails because it gets in your heart and grows. Amen. 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 But it can't get in your heart and grow without meditation. Feeding on it. And you can't do that without uh, 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 resisting distractions. Amen. Because there's always something that comes up, you know. (laughs) <laughs> Always something comes up trying to get you away from that time. Well, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Well, that's, that's not uh, focusing on the main thing that will give you all the, yes. what you really need in life. So the word. Number one, the word. Now, number two, the things that uh, Satan wants us to be distracted from is uh, the spirit realm, which is the place of answers. The spirit realm, which is the place of answers. And let me go through these because we're going to come back to that one. Number three, the race that we're to run. You remember the Bible talks about, you know, Hebrews 12 verses 1 through 2, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and let us run with patience the race that's set before us. And then he said, King James said, looking unto Jesus. Yes. The Amplified says, looking away yes. from all that would distract yes unto Jesus. So he's talking about running this race and he says don't be distracted from the, running this race. Does that make sense? So whenever, that's one of the things he wants us distracted from. The race that God's called us to run. Isn't that right? What's God called you to run? What, what race has God called you to run? Um, uh, whatever that is you won't finish it because it, you won't finish it if you're distracted by the cares of life just the busyness of life. You know what I'm talking about? All the, you know, running around like a chicken with your head cut off, dealing with this, dealing with that. You have to set aside time to give yourself to this. All right, so that's a whole nother thing. Um, We might get to that at some point. But uh, another thing that uh, the enemy wants to distract, the distractions come to pull us away from is prayer. Remember I said distraction means to separate. Uh, he wants to separate you from a life of prayer. And really, that's the one we're going to spend some time on. We might get to that Wednesday night. We'll see how we go. But uh, the main verse on that is First uh, Peter chapter number 4, verse number 7. The Bible talks about that there. And we'll get to that. But uh, the, the, the last thing that, uh, that the Lord's been talking to me about, this wouldn't be the last thing at, by all means, but that the Lord's been talking to me about concerning distractions is divine connections. He wants to distract you from your divine connection. I've seen that over and over and over again. So come tonight and uh, hear page two on that one. (laughs) All right. Now notice the spirit realm, the the place of answers, the place of answers. He wants you to distract you. He wants to distract you from that. Now let's talk about that a little bit. Psalm 77 verse number 13. Uh, part of that verse there's more to that verse than we're going to quote but Psalm 77 13 thy way O God is in the sanctuary thy way O God is in the sanctuary now the sanctuary in the Old Testament was the the, the presence of God the manifest presence of God was in the sanctuary 
So he's talking about spending time in the presence of God. Yes. You get the, the mind of God, the, the direction for your life, or just a decision you've got to make, yes. or, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, which, you know, like a decision. Uh, you get that in the presence of God. It comes up out of your spirit while you're in the presence of God. In other words, what do I mean by in the presence of God? The presence of God is, is every, God is, the Holy Ghost is everywhere all the time. But His, His presence is not always in manifestation. You, the, there's a place, remember Psalm chapter 91, verse number 1, He that dwells in the secret place. Secret place. There's a place called the presence of God. Where you fellowship with Him when everything else is put out. Remember Jesus talked about going into your closet and sh shutting your door? Right? What do you do when you go in your closet and you shut your door? Well, you're tuning other things out. And that's a place of prayer is what it really is. And that's a place that you and I need to find. All of us need to find that place. That's not a physical place. But it might include a physical place, which is secluded or something like that. But, uh, but it's, it's a place in the, in the uh, spirit, really. It's, it's a place in the spirit where you tune everything else out and you go from here to here. Yes. What I, what I mean your head down to your heart yes. and you start fellowshipping with God out of your heart. Yes. And it's called in the spirit. Yes. In the spirit. Amen. And it's the place of hearing. It's the place of answers. Yes. Can you say amen? Amen. It's the place of answers. It's the place where you hear those answers. Now, a couple of verses on this, Acts 13. We've been talking about this, Acts 13, 1 through 3. As they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said. What are they doing? Ministering to the Lord. They're praising and worshiping God. They're not sitting around a, a board meeting table trying to calculate and figure what they're going to do and looking at the budget and looking at the expenses and looking at the, No, not, nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying they're simply spending time in the presence. Where did they get the direction? As they ministered to the Lord, fasted the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. They got that direction in that place of prayer. In that place of, you might say, in the, in the presence of God, fellowshipping with Him through praise and worship. So uh, that verse is uh, one we've been talking about. And another one we've been talking about, one of my favorites, Second Chronicles 20, verse number 12. It talks about the, the three enemy armies that came against Israel, uh, all mightier than them alone, but three of them combined came against Israel, or Judah actually. And the Bible says they didn't know what to do, so they sought the Lord and they prayed. And they said, you said, you, you said this was our land. They're coming to take us out of our land. And you said this, this temple, when we built this temple, that anyone who comes here and prays, that you'd give them their answer answer. I'm paraphrasing. And so here we are. They all gathered at the temple and they're asking direction. What do we do? We, we don't have any power or might against this mighty army. Neither know we what to do. He's talking about they didn't, they didn't, how, how are we going to defeat this? How are we going to stand against this army? Uh, but our eyes are on you. Hallelujah. I said, they said, our eyes are on you. <laughs> they're standing there tuning everything else out. The cows, at, the cows at home might need fed. They were all farmers. I grew up on the farm. The cows don't get fed. They're noisy. And when they get, don't get milk, they get noisy. They're probably out there. I grew up on the farm. I can whoop anybody with cow sounds. Although I did meet a guy that whooped me out in California the other a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, you didn't even grow up on the farm. What's wrong with that? <laughs> but, so, but, but they, they said all those distractions. Aside, Our eyes are on you. Yeah. All right, that's talking about their attention. Yes. Yep, yes, sir. Hallelujah. I don't have the verse in front of me, but I keep, it keeps coming to me. Psalm 62, it's around verse 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, down there through somewhere. It talks about my expectation is from you only. Amen. Amen. You got to get to that place to where you're expecting something from him. You're expecting an answer. You're expecting help. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not, huh? Verse number five. Verse five. Verse five. Psalm 62, verse five. Praise God. My expectation. And that's what you, you, you do in this time of prayer. You get in his presence and you just set everything else out and say, my eyes are on you. I'm looking to you. And you, 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 you talk to him out of your heart and listen to what he's saying to you. 
Hallelujah. And the Bible said as they did that, upon certain man named him there, there came the Holy Ghost and said, uh, you know, be encouraged basically. You'll not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, see the salvation of the Lord. Go out tomorrow against them. The Lord will be with you. Remember that? So they did, and they praised God there, and they did what he said, and uh, the Bible said the Lord sent ambushments. That's enemy armies to fight for them. Praise God. And they didn't need to fight in that battle. But uh, we get our focus on the angels and the victory that was out there. There was one out there on the battle through those angels confusing the enemy. But, but really the help came back there in that time of prayer right. when, they got, when they got in his presence and found out what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. That's, that's where their help came. Praise the Lord. Uh, their help came, you might say it this way I like the way, I like the way uh, Pastor Nancy said it their help came through their hearing yes. Yes. the place of th- there's a place in prayer where you hear yes. you hear your answer yes. now I don't, I don't believe in magic but, but it's just the way we say it sometimes you hear what to do in a certain situation that hasn't been working and yes. it's like I don't know what to do yes. but you hear a divine yes answer from heaven and go out and do it it'll work like magic it'll work like magic I'm not talking about superstition stuff but I'm just saying it'll just work like clockwork sometimes you you go I don't even I've been trying to make this work forever but you get an answer from heaven because you heard from heaven and you go out and act on that answer it'll work you know why it'll work? A lot of times because now you heard, from, you heard an answer from the realm of help. You heard an answer from the spirit realm. Amen. Praise God. So those are some verses um, that we talk about. And what this is is an element of your prayer life. There's more to our prayer life than just the prayer of faith. There's the prayer of supplication. Waiting on God. Spending time in His presence. Fellowshipping with Him. Praying in other tongues, worship, praising and thanking Him. Hallelujah. Shutting your mind down and just operating out of your heart. If I hadn't learned to do that, I don't know where I'd be today. I'd, be, I'd, I'd probably be squirrely in my head. I know that. Because, boy, there's been times when whew, there's a bombardment against my head. And I don't know what to do. If I hadn't got an answer, I'd probably go on squirrely. Yeah, come on. Amen. Probably all of us. Thank God for His help. Amen. So uh, we're learning to do this. Um, Romans ten seventeen, faith comes. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. In Second Chronicles, they heard. Now it doesn't always come the way it came in Second Chronicles. There, it came through a prophecy. It can come that way. I've, I've had that happen in my prayer life. I'm praying in tongues about something, just uh, praying up out of my spirit, drawing the answers up out of my spirit, because the Bible says when you pray in tongues, you speak mysteries. Yeah. Praying out the mystery, it's a mystery to me, yeah. my, mystery to my head. But the Holy Ghost knows exactly what yeah. to do. Yeah. So I'm praying it out, and there's been times, not, not all the time by any means, but there's been times uh, up out of my spirit comes an utterance in tongues, and, or, or sometimes it's just prophecy, outright prophecy. But either an utterance in tongues, an interpretation, or prophecy, and my own, ma- my own answer comes out of my own mouth. Yeah. That can happen. That doesn't have to be that way. You can pray sometimes for a period of time and then go your way, having known you prayed something out. And as you go your way, maybe two days later, all of a sudden, up out of your spirit, blah, 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 there comes the answer. Yes, <laughs> and you go do it. Amen. Praise God. Now, people want the, you know, like there in Second Chronicles, miracles, angels, great victory. They want that, but they want to skip over the hearing. Yes, sir. Doesn't work that way. Amen. Say it doesn't work that way. So uh, don't skip over the, hear, the, the, the hearing and try to get right to the power. No, you have to go through the door into that manifest power. That door is hearing what God has to say about this situation. Well, it's written in the Word, but yes, it's a, somebody said, well, just do the Word. Yeah, but it's a big book. Which part do I stand on? Amen. You can't just do this. Faith is not something mental. We just pull something out of the Bible mentally. Well, by his stripes I'm healed. Yeah, that's for sure. 
But maybe there's something else that God will highlight in your situation. And that'll be in your situation, the wisdom of God. It'll be the wisdom of God. And sometimes it'll, there'll be specifics you, don't, you'll, you won't have written in the Word, but you'll get them from the Holy Ghost. And now, like I said, uh, faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17. And so uh, faith comes by hearing, but don't just do that. Don't, don't just think of that mentally. Uh, there's two Greek words translated word because notice it says faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God there's two Greek words translated word in the New Testament one is logos and one is rhema logos is the written word rhema is the spoken word here it's rhema faith comes by hearing spoken not just written not just the ink on the page but something that is spoken by the Holy Ghost Yes, it's the, it's the written Word of God, but it's inspired by the Holy Ghost. You, the Holy Ghost speaks it to you. And it's a living thing. It stands up on the inside. Stands up off the, we sometimes say, say, stands up off the page. Comes alive to us. Comes real to us. You know, whenever that comes, faith just came. Faith just came. Amen. It might have been something you've known in your mind for 25 years. But boy, the Holy Ghost yeah. breathes on it yeah. and inspires it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, woohoo! Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. People are trying to skip over that part and try to go right to the, well, I, I remember the Bible said, well, it's, it's good to remember what the Bible said. But fellowship, fellowship is not just based on mental memory fellowship is based on the heart sharing of God's heart with your heart and your heart with God's heart and talking about something heart to heart amen so um, faith comes by hearing what God has to say about it that'd be both the written word of course but it'd also be the spoken word amen and so really until you hear you're not safe moving forward because if you, if you don't hear from God and you move forward, then you're out there on your own. And whenever you're out there on your own and uh, the enemy comes to oppose you or yakety yak yak, to, uh, you know, with, with bombarding thoughts of unbelief right, yep. or fear, if you haven't heard, you have nothing to fight with. That hearing is a weapon. What you heard is like a weapon. Yes, yes. The sword of the Spirit. Yes. Remember the Bible talks about the sword yes. of the Spirit, which is the Word yes. of God. Yes. Not just the dead Word, the living yes. Word. Yes. What did you hear? Yes. I knew when we, we launched into Kansas City, starting the second church, I knew I got to get some things clear on the inside. I got to hear from, he already spoke to us about doing it, but I got to get some specifics yes. here. Yes. I got to pray this out. And he, you know, step by step, talked to us about different things. Yes. And so now when the enemy opposes us in those areas, I go back to what I heard. That's my weapon. God said, Mr. Devil. But what if you don't have a God said? Or, or the, I remember the Holy Ghost spoke this to me. What if you don't have that? You got nothing to fight with. And you're at a disadvantage, to be honest with you. You, you understand what we're talking about? So what God said to you is your answer to opposition when it comes. Oh, I'm not going to believe for opposition. Don't say anything, Pastor, about opposition. Well, you don't have to say anything about it. It'll just come. <laughs> It'll just come. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it won't, come, it won't come because you made some mistake. Sometimes it'll come because you're doing the right thing. So praise the Lord. So you've got to go on with those words in your mouth. But if you haven't heard, you don't have anything to put in your mouth. So hearing God gives you faith to do what he says, but it also gives you the faith to keep on standing when it's opposed. Hallelujah. If God didn't say it to you, then you don't have any faith to stand. Don't have any faith to resist the enemy with. Well, I'm a faith person. No, not in that area if you didn't hear from God. Well, so-and-so heard from God, and I'm just doing what they said. You didn't hear what they heard. You didn't hear what they heard. They might have heard right, yep. God say, do this. Yep. Yeah. 
You know, somebody can say, well, so-and-so, God told them not to have an operation and they were healed, so I'm, not gonna, I, I'm, I'm just not going to have an operation. Well, they heard that. Did you hear that? That, that won't work because faith comes by hearing. Hearing. Amen. Not hearing what God said to somebody else. Hearing God for yourself. Now, why do you have to have, uh, why do you have to have those kinds, of, why do you have to hear? Because, you know, there's a, there's a verse over in Hebrews. I don't know if I've got it in front of me somewhere here. Um, the Bible talks about in Hebrews in one place. I think it's Hebrews 8. Uh, we've got a lot of Bible scholars here. We'll find it. <laughs> but uh, it talks about do all. God told Moses, do everything according to the pattern shown you on the mount. Yeah. Remember that? Yep. Do everything according to the pattern. That's talking 8 verse 5. Verse 5. 8 verse 5. Do everything. Hebrews 8 5. Do everything according to the pattern shown thee on the mount. That's quoting the Old Testament where God said that to Moses. Do what, do what I showed you on the mount. Now for him, mount, the mount was, remember he was up on the Mount Sinai and got the Ten Commandments. The glory cloud came down. God fellowshiped with him. Told him how to, he gave him the Ten Commandments, but he told him how to build the tabernacle and everything. And he said, do everything according to the pattern shown you on the mount. Now on the mount was just another word for in the spirit in the spirit do everything like you saw in the spirit do everything like you heard me talking to you about in the spirit amen, amen. now why would he have to say now make sure and do it according to the way you saw it on the mountain uh-huh. pastor nancy said this recently is this I, I, i'll give her credit this time <laughs> just so good so good she said because Moses was about to come down to three million Jews with an opinion remember and he's up on the mount they're down there the, the whole Israelite congregation's down there waiting for him and he's coming down he's going to say this is what God said and everybody's going to have an opinion about it you realize that's, that's the truth you know when you're in the presence of God and God speaks to you everybody's going to have something to say about it including your relatives. They'll have something to say about it. Well, God told us to go to church over here. Well, I mean, Grandma's tears are on the altar down there at the Old Time Methodist Church. You know, you can't, you got to go to the Old Time Methodist Church. (laughs) Everybody's got an opinion about it. But do everything according to what you heard. Not heard from somebody, heard from God. And, And whenever somebody else has an opinion or a suggestion, and try to pull you in the mental realm yes. then you're going to have to have something to fight the good fight of faith with and uh, if you don't if you don't uh, have if you don't know what God heard or what you heard when, when God spoke to you then you'll have nothing to f- um, you, you can get revelation uh, in the presence of God and hear God speak to you in his presence and know for sure I mean you come out of there like well, I know it I know it I heard from God and I mean, you got, you got the assurance. Let, let me tell you something about that kind of time. You ought to write that down. Yeah. Write down what you heard. And do it right away, yeah. because when you do it right away, yes. you'll, that, I, don't, I don't know how to expl- explain this other than I've experienced it many times. It seems like when you do it under that anointing, yeah. Yeah. when you first heard, yeah. it seems like that, that what you wrote down carries that anointing. Because yeah. you're, you're writing it just like it came to you. Yeah. And you go back and read it later, and it just comes right back to you, and that same unction comes back. But, but uh, I said write it down because you want to hold on to it, not let it get past you. But uh, another, another thing you need to realize is whenever you heard, there's all sorts of... Uh, the, 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 the presence of God when you heard that was strong, and, and the presence of God that, that when God spoke that, it had a lot of conviction and it had a lot of uh, assurance and so forth and so on. But you can get away from that time of prayer and begin to think about it and, and, and you don't still feel that presence. You know what I mean? And have all that, that reinforcement from the presence of God. And you're like, well, I don't know. I don't know if, God, if I heard from God or not. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So you need to hold on to that. Yes. <clears throat> and you need to and write it down yes. and keep going back over it and keep reminding. Let me tell you somebody else you need to remind. is the devil. You need to remind him. God said. Yes. Hallelujah. That's how you fight the good fight of faith. I said that's how you fight the good fight of faith. So um, when you get off the mount, there's going to be other voices. 
Don't take your direction from the other voices. Whether it comes through people or the yakety yak yak of the devil. This is where Christians, they, 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 I'm a faith person. <laughs> and they hear from God and step out in faith and the devil goes boo and they go, ah, yeah, yeah. they run back to mama. <laughs> yeah, on, yeah. Amen. Amen. Suck their thumb, get their bit blankie yeah. and, and talk about, talk about, you know, the good old days. Okay. I'm, I'm preaching better than your amen. Right. Yeah. You got to hold fast. Amen. And not be distracted. Yes. Hallelujah. What God said is your anchor. Amen. Let it anchor you and hold you fast. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. You're about done with me because you seem like you're unhooking a little bit. <laughs> God's help is in the hearing. Yes. People want to run to the power, the power, and thank God for the power. But you get to the power through the door of hearing. Do what you heard. His help is in his thoughts, and hearing conveys his thoughts. His thoughts, remember, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. He's got higher thoughts, and when you hear his thoughts, it's going to lift you to a higher place. And those thoughts are where his help is. Don't, don't uh, by, bypass that and just try to mechanically be a, a, a mental faith person. Now, what, what this will do, hearing will fix things that have not been working. Amen. Amen. It, when, when somebody's going through the motions, long, long motions over and over again, and it's just not working. You, you know, because sometimes we faith people, we don't want to look at something like that. Right. Now, we're just going to put our head down, just keep on plowing through. Yeah, and for years, we struggle in the same area. In faith. Well, real faith works. Now, I've been there. I'm not putting anybody down. I know what that's like. I know what that's like. And so I go back to the, I, I, I've learned over the years that I can tell whenever I haven't made my connection in here. I'm just going through the motions. I might even be saying, th- I might even be saying faith words to other people. But down in here, I don't really... Yeah, I don't. I haven't really heard that. that I didn't really hear that. Yeah, that's I just know what they, the, you know, they're faith people, and I know what what we all say. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all say faith things. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. I've worked with the sick and healing school, Kenneth Hagin Ministries. I know what people do, yeah. and and I and I identified it in them. And then I said, Oh my God, I see it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. So so uh, faith hearing fixes things that aren't working. Hearing fixes things that aren't working. In situations like that, go back to the to the presence of God and say, God, is there anything that I have that I miss that I'm not understanding? Amen. Sometimes the reason is just that we know in our heads what the Word of God says, but uh, we we are not connecting with it in our hearts. And sometimes there's reasons we're not connecting with it in our hearts. Amen. Maybe because uh, Miss Jennifer, she preached it to us last, last service. She said, I'm believing God, believing God to sell these, what were they, dolls or what were they? Bears, bears. <laughs> so I'm believing God. And God's whispered to her, whispered to her what to do. Yeah. I'm believing God. She didn't pay attention to that. Yeah. We're not yeah. putting her down because we've done it 75 times. <laughs> Maybe she's done it three. I don't know. <laughs> but. So, but, but when she went, when she got quiet, went back to that and did what she uh, heard, say that out loud, did what she heard, heard. boom, there it started working. Now she's selling bears by the bushels. (laughs) Amen. That's the truth about it. Glory. Glory. She's talking about her mother's inheritance. Her mother gathered up a lot of, she collected bears, I guess. Well, praise the Lord. Nobody in here has ever done anything like that. Amen. No, we have. We're, we're just, we're just, we were just enjoying uh, talking about her and not about us. You know, we just, <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, some of you are done. You can't handle it anymore. So let's stand to our feet. Praise God for the word. There's a place to get answers. It's the secret place of the most high. There's a place where you can get divine wisdom for your situation. 
If anyone lacks wisdom, remember James 5, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Gives everyone liberally and upbraideth not. Wisdom is what he knows about your situation. It's insight from his realm. And, uh, you know, uh, the context of that is in the, you know, verse, first couple of verses. James 1, verse 1 and 2, 3. Uh, any, uh, going through a test or trial, count it all joy. Right? right? And, and persevere in faith. But if you lack wisdom, ask. God will give you wisdom. The context is going through a test or trial. And there's times, God, what do you see about this that I don't see? Yeah. It could be a relationship issue. Yeah. Right? right? Why is, why is this relationship struggling? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's not always just the devil. Yeah. It might be you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. And it's not always them. Well, if they just wouldn't be carnal. Get their mind renewed. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you'd walk in love. Oh, I'm meddling now. I got to stop preaching and gone to meddling. Praise God. Melissa sent me that note, Brian. Now she's just. just <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Did you get anything out of that this morning? It's, you know, faith. I remember, I don't know how many years ago, the Lord said to me, mix your relationship with me in the spirit now with your life of faith. Does that make any sense? Mix your life, your relationship with me in the spirit now with your faith. In other words, you know now what the word says in many areas of life. Now I know, I'm, I've logged it up here. I've renewed my mind. But I can't operate out of faith. If, I can't operate faith out of my mind. Faith is of the heart. So whatever he says to me in my fellowship, I, I, I emphasize that more than I ever have in my life. Amen. Amen. Whatever he says to me. Now, I, I, if I don't hear anything, then I just go with what the Word says. Yes. We ought to do that anyway, right? Yes. But as we're doing that, don't just do it with a sort of a, a kind of a, how would I say it, kind of a arrogant, like I know everything I need to know kind of an attitude. Always stay open to what the Holy Ghost might say. Yes. Always stay open to what the Holy Ghost might say. Yes. And uh, be, a, be responsive to what the Holy Ghost says. Yes. While you're using your faith in the Word, the Holy Ghost will whisper something to you. Yeah, I remember a lady told a story, a minister told this story about a lady came and said, I want you to help me on something. I'm, I, I got a hold of the Word about all my covenant rights and so forth. One of them is divine protection and, you know, the devourer's rebuke for my sake and so forth. She would make these confessions. And she said, uh, could you help me on, said to this ministry, could you help me on something? I was downtown uh, in my city and uh, somebody you know I don't think they mugged her but they just ran up and grabbed her purse and ran off and uh, she wanted this minister to explain why that happened I made my confessions of faith even that morning yeah. well you don't know I mean you weren't there you, you, you weren't living uh, there in the house you don't know what happened but I mean in, the, in her prayer time but he asked by the he just checked the spirit this is the way we help people Sometimes we don't have, most of the time, we don't have, in the other people's lives, we don't have their answer. People come to us, and we don't know. What's God saying to your heart? But the minister dipped down in the spirit, and he sensed the Lord saying, ask her if she had any premonition not to go down, because she was down there shopping, not to go downtown shopping that day. And he asked her, and she said, oh, yeah, I mean, it came to me not to go, but I just rebuked that and said, Satan, I, no, I'm, I rebuke you. I'm protected, you know. Well, uh, she overrode that. See, it's a fellowship with God. Yeah. Faith is a walk. It's not, a, it's not something you do yeah. one day, right. right? It's a daily fellowship, yeah. daily walk. What's he saying right now? What's he talking to your heart about? Yeah. Now, I don't mean, look, I, I got to quit. I don't mean that people, some people are unstable. They're doing this one day and doing something else another day. And if you listen to them, God's schizophrenic. Right. Yeah. He's confused. Yeah. I'm not talking about that. You understand? But faith is a step-by-step -step thing. And, and as you stay on the course into the thing you're believing for, there'll be steps God will have you take. And many times those steps come because you are believing God. That woman that got her purse stolen, she was believing God. And that opened the door for God to direct her to not go down there that day. So you, gotta, you can't separate. You ever heard this statement? You can't separate faith from being led by the Spirit. Pastor, we've known this for 20 years. I know. So do I. I've known it for longer than you. And I still got to catch myself on this sometimes. 
What's in my spirit? What's in my spirit? What's in my spirit? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was told there's a lady here that would like us to pray for her. Is, is she still here? They maybe had it was it a stroke or something. Somebody, I'd be honored, ma'am, if, if you would like that. I'd be honored to lay hands on you, pray with you, agree with you. Praise God. We're a church that joins our faith with others, right? Amen. Praise God. Uh, maybe Miss LaDonna, you want to come? Ann, you want to come? I think you spoke with her. Praise the Lord. Say it out loud. Jesus is the healer. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Stretch out your hands toward our sister. Praise God. Was I correct? It was a stroke you had, a stroke or something. When was it? A week ago. A week ago. Bless your heart. It's good to see you here. I'm glad you came to church. Are you from around the area? Yes. Yes. Stretch out your hand toward her. Father, the compassion of God that's manifesting right now, heal her in the name of Jesus. Restore her. Whatever damage was done when that stroke happened, I ask you to restore it by your power right now in Jesus' mighty name. Satan, take your hands off of her mind, her, her brain, whatever was affected by this stroke, and we release the power of God in the compassion of heaven into her body to restore her in every way. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. You know, sister, the Bible says when we pray, that's the time where we we. The Bible says, believe we receive. So now's that point of where we do that. Let's all just lift our hands and say, we believe, we believe it with her, with her that she receives her healing. She receives her healing. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you agree with that? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, my goodness. The compassion of God's all over me. Would you hug her for me? <laughs> Praise God. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see something heavy on your heart, sister. A desire you have in your heart. I believe it's for some family members. I don't know full revelation of what it is. But I see a desire of your heart. Ah, masakiyete. Uh, I join my faith with you that that turns. That turns in Jesus' name. Does that mean anything to you? Yes, yes it does. Good. He's a good God. He's, he's working on it right now. He's working on it right now. Praise God. What's your name? Shanae. Shanae. It's so good to have you today. Thank you. Praise God. Can you come back? We'd love to have you. Come back and just let us encourage you. Amen. Praise God. Love you in the Lord. Praise God. Thank, just lift your hands and thank God for ministering to her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody else want ministry to, 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 you got some kind of condition in your body. Since this started flowing, we might as well flow with it. Anyone else, you want ministry in your body. Something's gone wrong, maybe some kind of diagnosis or something. Come on up here. Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We give you praise. You're right, brother. <laughs> praise the Lord. This anointing's flowing, so let's just let's flow with it. Praise God. If, you, if you're in the auditorium, you're in the crowd, just reach out your hand toward these. Sing with us or, or, or believe God with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. I lay my hands on you for power to go into your body. Thank you, Father, for healing his body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be healed this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for that anointing. In Mama Thank you for that anointing. In Jesus' name. In 
Jesus' name. Thank you for that anointing, Father, healing her body. Satan, take your hands off her body. In Jesus' name, I lay hands on you. Release God's power. Thank you, Father, for healing her body. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. We lay hands on you for power to go into your body and heal your body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Be healed this morning in Jesus' name. By the faith of God, we take hold of it and command the body to respond in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We lay hands on you in the name of Jesus. There it goes. <laughs> it went right into you. Thank you, Father. Be healed this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed this morning in Jesus' mighty name the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus name in Jesus name is this for him I lay hands on him and command him to be restored in the name of Jesus thank you father command that, that, that uh, what's that called that uh, yeah allergic reaction I call that allergic reaction that's a stop in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name I lay hands on you for your healing. Be healed this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Be healed this morning, Leanne, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. And where's Ann? In, in the Masakite. Lay your hands on her chest. In the name of Jesus. Oof. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I lay hands on this cloth so that when it's laid on the body of the sick, Father, it'll take sickness out of that body, drive it out in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. We lay hands on this cloth to drive out the disease when it's laid on the body of the one it represents in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Be healed this morning in Jesus' name from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, are Matt and Katie here? Are they still here? They, 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 they're not? Okay. Okay. All right. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands and thank God for his power that went into these. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. We thank you that that has been destroyed in the lives of those that had hands laid on them this morning. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, say the Lord is good. He's good to me. And he's good all the time. Greet somebody beside you and say that to him. The Lord is good. He's good to me. And he's good all the time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. All right. So tonight, don't miss tonight. Uh, most of the time in preparations yesterday, the Lord has kept talking to me about tonight. So come ready. Come hungry, right? What time is it? Six o'clock? Six o'clock. So come, be ready. Uh, we're calling it Minister's Mantle, but there's other ministers going to be watching by close, what do they call that? live stream but you know what's it yeah private link so uh we're going to be mostly ministering in that direction but it'll be good for all of us amen good for all of us so uh greet your neighbor as you go K kansas city thank you for joining us today praise god we look forward to seeing you again real soon praise the lord may everything that we flowed here flow in your life healing or whatever was flowing here praise the lord so greet your neighbor as you go. Tell them I'll see you. Most of us will be here tonight. And uh, you're dismissed. Praise God. Mm -hmm.